Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Retro Tech. And today I'm going to be doing a comments and questions video. So let's just go ahead and dive right into these questions. I've got a couple good ones here. First comes from Big Boss. And this is on the, how, the recent video on how to calibrate a JVC HRCRT, the professional video monitor. And Big Boss says, wish you did a video on a consumer CRT like D-Series or L-Art. JVC on the consumer side is really limited on the service menu and how to adjust the yoke. He says his is sealed with a nut and epoxy around the, no, the nut and he can't get it off to adjust. Okay, so first off, you can probably try to safely peel that epoxy, just slowly work it off. And you still can adjust your yoke most likely the same way. But I do plan on doing some content eventually down the road on consumer CRTs as I have them available in my shop. But I did want to talk about a couple of videos that I do have coming up right away. And first one is the other JVC video. I've got two more videos on the little JVC, which is the one that I did the calibration video. I appreciate everybody watching the calibration video because let's face it, a lot of people probably don't have that monitor and we're just trying to learn more about calibrating CRTs by watching it. I really appreciate you watching it. Uh, but this one is going to go into all the details on the JVC monitor and give you a lot of background on it, what specific uh, features it offers, and a little bit on how it compares to other pro video monitors. And then after that one, I've just got a cool little, um, really more of an art style video coming after that on the JVC. And that'll be it for that little JVC monitor. And those videos are already done and shot. So here is the D series that I've got. It's currently in my shop and you've probably seen it in the background. It's got some interesting stories behind it. So I'm going to uh, do a video on that eventually. However, I'm going to have a big project coming up really soon. And that's another monitor restoration project. I recently got two more monitors in the mail and I've got videos showing more details on that. But the first one is this M4U right here. And then the other one is a BVM. It's a D-series BVM. So it's a 14-inch BVM D14H5U. So I'm really excited. This thing has a um, lot of issues with it, and it's going to need a full restoration. I mean, full as far as you're going to get as a restoration video is going to be concerned. We're going to do it to this BVM. I've even got a new bezel to install. Um, we're going to install a new tube in it, capacitors, everything that we uh, can possibly do this one we will be doing to it. And then that's going to be it for uh, what's coming up. So um, I will, again, do... A video series eventually on that D series. That's why I've got it. And when I do that video, I will include how to calibrate it and walk you through the back of it like I did the other monitors. So unfortunately, you just have to kind of hang out and wait for me to catch up to all those. I apologize, but I just kind of got to do some things in the order that I need them done in severity. So just keep, keep with the channel and eventually we'll get to the D series. All right, so my next question actually came from Facebook, and this one was sent to me from another viewer. So, hello, please excuse my disturbance. My Sony BVM A20F1M has the standby LED blinking for 15 times, then the operation LED stays on for 10 seconds, then again, the standby blinks 15 times. Have you come across this problem? And unfortunately, the A series is kind of a dubious and uh, troublesome P uh, BVM monitor for anybody to really buy that's not a an experienced technician for the most part. So I tell everyone to try to avoid the A series unless it absolutely just falls into your lap. And here's a quick look at what an A-series looks like. So it looks a lot like any of the other BVMs you'll see. And it's also one of the last, uh, it is the last model line made. So you'd think, oh, well, it's so technolo more technology in it, which there is. But you do have to keep your eyes up for these things. First off, if you notice, 
There's no control buttons on it like there are on other BVMs. So you have to have a control unit. Now, sometimes they'll be built in with a BKM kit, but a lot of times they won't. So you'll always have to check if you do run into an A-Series, if, if it comes with a control board, then, um, the, and this is just to start with, so you've got the a, that board, but if you look around back on the A-Series, this is one of the biggest issues with the A-Series overall, and most people know this, it's this analog board, it's pictured, this is a BKM68X, and if you just research a little bit about it, it is very difficult to get one of these. Um, Save on Pat said that I think there's somewhere around maybe 300 of these were ever even made, this BKM uh, 68X board. I'm not sure that for certain, so if anybody does know the exact run, they can leave that in the comments. But it is an extremely rare board, and uh, since it is, it only comes available for sale very rarely. And when it does, it's thousands of dollars. I mean, $3,000 sometimes. So that's another reason to completely avoid this monitor, because that is the only way to get RGB or component into this BVM. It's the only way. There's not a replacement card out there, and there is not a mod that's available or anything like that right now for this monitor. You have to have that 68X card to even get RGB or component. Now, there are other boards that you can get. Now, if you do come across one of these, and it's an extremely good deal, there is one good thing to keep these for, and that is for the tube that's inside of them. Because most of the time, the tubes inside of them do not uh, go bad because they haven't been used very often most times and they can be switched from this model over to d series so it's very valuable to keep the monitors just for the tube inside of them because there's a, and then hope and pray that you run across a d series that someone is selling with a bad tube and then you might be able to get a good deal on a d series by having a tube from an a series go in and put, installing it into uh, the D-Series. But let's get back to this guy's problem where he's having problems with it shutting off and overloading. And honestly, this is one thing I've been wanting to bring up that most of the problems you have with power issues where it, the monitor will turn on for a second, and this could be any CRT monitor, 90% of the problems are in the power supply. And that's what... The problems are with the capacitors. They dry out over time and they do not work and allow the same amount of current you know, to travel through them and they lose their functionality altogether over time. So the majority of power supply issues or power issues on a PVM is because the power supply has bad components in it. And most of the time, 90% of the time, it's capacitors. Now you will, if it's not the capacitors, you change the capacitors and you're still having issues, then it's obviously something else. But that's pretty much where we always start if there's a power issue is with that power supply. And then it could be another thing that's gone bad on the power supply, maybe an IC or something. But most of the time, 90% of the time, it is a power supply issue that causes power issues and standby modes and things like that to occur um, it's not always that, but that's a most of the time where we're going to start for diagnostics. Uh, you can get replacement power boards for most PVMs. Just check with the service manual for your PVM and see which ones are similar to that. And then you may be able to find a replacement power supply unit and just replace the whole unit. And then you can maybe get the old power supply rebuilt and sell it back or, you know, trade it or use it. But that's where the majority of the problems was. One last thing about the A-Series, and I know I've been talking about this one a little bit longer than it probably should. The A-Series also has firmware updates that are, if, the, if it's not been properly set up to begin with, uh, it can keep it from even powering on. And it's all just because of a firmware update that needs to be, uh, you know, these things need to get updated firmware. So occasionally you'll get one and it won't even shut it won't even turn itself on or won't function. And it's, again, because of a firmware issue. And so these A-Series had a lot of problems with them as far as, like, compatibility issues because they're right on the cusp of the HD era and the flat screen LCDs and all that stuff. So that's pretty much it for that one. Now I've got my third question here. It comes from Jim, and this is an email. So 
Okay, so he immediately has a question now. Jim had recently gotten a power supply cap kit for his 1953 MD. And he says here he got everything apart, trying to make sure, and he's getting ready to replace the capacitors. That's just some background here. He's going through the cap list. It started with the biggest caps, and he immediately noticed that he had an extra capacitor. And after looking at the board compared to the capacitor kit, he noticed that he actually had three extra capacitors. And so he's he started working. We started discussing. This was something I wanted to bring up. He was nice enough to include a picture here. So you can see this cap kit actually included some of these caps that were not populated on his board. And he's got some more parts here that are not populated on this board. So this can occasionally happen because, again, this is a power supply. So in a 20-year-old monitor, you could have had a technician come in and swap a power supply from another monitor or a compatible monitor that happens to have unpopulated things here because maybe the monitor wasn't uh, or this power supply wasn't set up to do the same things or all the functionality of another higher rated power supply. So this is an interesting thing that there's different power supplies that can work for different monitors. And uh, because where I got the cap kit that was developed was straight from the manual for this monitor. So Jim may have had a cap kit or not a cap kit, but he may have had a technician at some point come in and install a separate new power supply within his PVM, or it could have come with a lower rated power supply out of the manufacturer's facility for some reason, uh, either to save costs, as maybe like a cost savings option to the person who bought this originally. That's also a possibility. So this is just something I want everybody to be made sure of because I was kind of surprised by this a little bit. Although I had seen it before, I have not seen it where there's actually three or four capacitors that were left uh, completely unpopulated. So if you see this, don't be concerned with adding the parts back. If it came out of your monitor and it was functioning to begin with, then you can leave it the way it is because this is obviously a factory setup where somebody didn't just remove the parts themselves. It was done like this from the factory. So anyway, that's it for this episode of comments. Thank you everybody for leaving comments and questions. Uh, if you do have any comments, hey, leave them on the video, send me an email, send me it through social media. I'm sorry, I'm really terrible at responding to uh, Facebook and Reddit and um, other, you know, Instagram directly. So the best way is usually to get a hold of me by leaving a comment on the videos. Honestly, that's the that's the easiest way. And and if you want to leave a comment, have me a better chance to read it. Leave it on the most recent video that's uploaded. Um, and I'll try to again get another one of these videos done at the longest every other week. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Uh, keep an eye out for those two JVC videos because they're coming soon. And I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.